Hello and welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live coding hangout. By joining a hangout, you can ask questions, work through tutorials, share ideas, or pair program on open source projects. Today, we're going to be working on a JavaScript and Python project where we've written um, an API, an HTTP API, as well as a Python API for calculating CO2 emissions um, based on the mode of transportation and distance traveled. We call this the Sustainable Mobility API. And I'm gonna be, it's an open source project, so I'll be working through some kind of maintenance tasks. And if we have time, we will also uh, try developing a new feature. So we have a roadmap and um, I'll post that up real quick. Let me get the, uh, the link to the repository here. I've got uh, things in two different browsers. So first I need to, and I'm just, <laughs> sorry for the delay, but I um, had to reinstall OBS, so things aren't uh, quite configured yet. I had to, um, for some reason I lost the browser plugin, which allows you to embed HTML elements over the stream, which gives uh, nice interactive features. Um, and so, I don't know why, but the um, package was, uh, the build in for Ubuntu lost that with the latest patch release, and so now I switched to the flat, uh, no, the snap build, and things are back and running, but I lost my scenes. <laughs> anyway, that's the way things work out sometimes. So what I'm looking for is sustainability. Let me I'll just show you our repo here on GitHub. Here we go. I'm switching over, keep an eye on the stream. Good, now we're up and running. So we've got uh, this package for estimating CO2 um, emissions for transport. And what we wanna do is help people uh, to be aware, become aware of um, the impact of our travel, our, our personal mobility, as well as being able to make decisions that would affect that and hopefully with the hopeful goal of reducing our impact, reducing our CO2 emissions. Now it's a really challenging topic and there's lots of nuance to it. So um, we're at the very beginning of this exploration, but we've published a few versions of this package. We've got four releases. Uh, most recently we've added unit tests. So we are more confident in our code. Um, we're building on emissions models that have been published um, by the European uh, Environment a uh, Agency. Let's see if I can find that real quick. In our estimator library, which has been published to Python package index. Uh, you can see it's a basic Python API with some um, functions and a class to estimate CO2 emissions based on in grams per um, distance traveled. And we have still an ongoing process about finding the right model and incorporating um, features that fit right into various products. Um, we're using this uh, internally right now for an audit uh, at our company with pretty good results. Uh, you know, so we're eating our own tofu and we hope that it's useful uh, in other companies um, and we welcome new contributors even if just creating an issue so let's take a look at our roadmap here and the 0 0.3 miles and we have just a couple of things just to set the stage here um, there's a security vulnerability in one of our JavaScript dependencies it's a dependency of a dependency so we'll get into that in a moment and see if, if we can do anything about that uh, and if time permits, I would like to work on one of these other features, uh, feature requests. We've started to get some initial feedback from external stakeholders, and we'd like to be responsive of that, you know, and follow through on those requests. And I think they're, they're reasonable. We have several issues that have been opened, um, and we've just kind of uh, selected a few um, for a small milestone release 0 0.3. So we keep our timeline kind of short and agile. Uh, but also show that we're responsive to the community. Very cool. 
So I will post this. Um, To the Twitch chat. I really should have the attribution here on the stream. So I'm going to really quickly add it above as an overlay of the video. So people watching the video can also see it. Ooh, that's huge. Yeah, shouldn't tweet the live stream while recording, but uh, let's say 20 point font. There's just not a good place to put it, I suppose. Is that decent? Yeah, and I'll, I'll improve it later. Okay, so yeah, let's take a look at this um, security update. And I really shouldn't be disclosing this, but it's not really um, I think too big of a deal at this point. From my understanding, the project is not really used in a production system. And the security vulnerability is like a low um, threshold. We we're using it just for internal auditing and feedback, stakeholder feedback. But essentially, what we've got here is two projects. This Python that has um, some dependencies, just a few, and a JavaScript API that has a few dependencies as well. The reason for the multiple layers is our first feedback basically said, hey, we don't use Python at our company. Um, so your project's not really useful to us. It wouldn't really fit into our environment, dev environment. So I, I took that seriously and we uh, sort of thought about it. We were like, should we port this to multiple languages somehow, auto transpiling or who knows what options would be. And we were like, well, HTTP is the lingua franca. You just kind of make a REST API and then you can call it from any Python any programming environment. Uh, so yeah, that was a, a good approach. And so just for background, we um, use this where's the uh, dependency for the API, I have to find that but this connection uh, is a Python package that lets us wrap an open API specification for an API design and documentation. And it maps it to Python functions in a class and serves it up. And then we just created a, a server, a Docker file for deployment on most cloud providers. This is a pretty flexible one. And a serverless file for cloud native deployment, specifically targeting AWS. Um, but that can be configured, and I think it, the serverless platform allows cross-cloud deployments. We just haven't tested that out. Okay, so that's where we are. That's the big picture of things. And one of our, in order to, for serverless to wrap the Python project, it needs this serverless Python requirements. Uh, so if I go in here to our system, oops, sorry about that, mobility API, and actually the API subfolder. And if I just run this um, npm, uh, audit. Is what you do. We'll see here we've got a um, dependency of our dependency that has a, a low um, severity um, vulnerability. And I did track this down. The There's an issue for this on the serverless Python requirements GitHub. And um, what I've done is just forked the project locally. Let's see, open folder. I forked it and now I've cloned it locally. And we're just gonna try to run this update and see, see what happens. Looks like streams have buffering issues. 
I auto configured OBS and it seems like it picked a really high um, stream rate. I'll lower the stream quality later to about half of what the bit rate is now. So we can see now um, this serverless Python requirements. So my first glance of it is, I guess, primarily JavaScript. I guess serverless is a JavaScript uh, for framework. And it looks like it's very AWS oriented, which is why we're using it. And I don't see a direct dependency on Minimus. It might even be a dependency of a dependency of a dependency. Hmm. Well, let's see. So now if I open the terminal, I just do npm audit on this. Cannot add a project without a lock file. First, let me get a branch going on. So that's kind of strange. I don't know why they're not checking in the lock file. That's not very conventional. Um, I guess just update dependencies. I don't know if I should put like any kind of security notice in there. I'll just put that in the uh, readme, or in the uh, pull request notes. So yeah, our head and master should be the same as the origin master of the fork on GitHub. Six, seven, three. Yeah. So the first thing is just this package lock. This just should be, I think, part for the course. So let's go ahead and generate the package lock. Whoops. And, uh, see what's going on there. Perhaps they could be using outdated versions of NPM for the development of this project. I don't know. All right. Created a lock file, added 224 packages, audited 448 packages. It's relatively quick. So now we have this package lock JSON. Big file there. And huh. They're like explicitly ignoring it. Why? 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 years ago. Maybe at two years ago the package lock was a new thing. I think Yarn was pretty new and kind of uh, showing the importance of having these lock files and reproducible builds. So maybe, I don't, I'm not going to guess too much on the motivation here, but I think it's fairly standard now um, to include these lock files and even you know Python has them with uh, poetry pip in and uh, to a certain extent pip it even you know you pin your versions there things like that so I'm going to uh, include that lock and then we can audit it <laughs> so we'll get a notification zero vulnerabilities interesting ah it could be just that the simple 
process of adding the package lock automatically selected the latest version of Minimist. Let me double check here. 1.2.5. Yeah, I think if we look at our um, security advisory, Minimist, it says just use the latest. So, okay. And actually, this is quite an old. Uh, well, I don't know the dependency, but if it's 0 0.2.1 or later, this hasn't been updated at all. Uh, okay, Minimist before 1.2.2 could be tricked into modifying object prototype. Okay, anyway, so that's how that works. <laughs> just learning new stuff. All right, so what I'm going to do is just push this up to GitHub, open a pull request against the upstream project and reference an issue and, and see if they accept it. I think it should be <laughs> without too much controversy, but it might surface some discussion about why they um, wanted to ignore the package lock. So first push. Then switch back over here. Uh, I've got to be kind of a little bit careful here because. Uh, are sort of open source or public. Um, but I want to open this against the upstream project. Uh, and there we are. United Income, so we're basing our update dependencies. Which is a fairly. I like this. I'm using this uh, Grammarly, and it's really catching my spelling errors and grammar errors. Um, four two six. I think it was four two. Grammarly's going to complain about passive voice here, but uh, I guess I could check it out. I don't want to rewrite my thing for active voice, but let's see. This was prompted by, which is a fairly conventional. Uh, just different word. Reason. How about just conventional? How about I just drop that? around it. I think Grammarly is actually learning about back ticks. Mm, yeah, I just need to also tag it closes.
and then what GitHub will do is automatically link the issue, which is a pretty handy feature. And when the, um, if or when the pull request is uh, merged, so we'll first we get this little update dependencies pull request thing. And also I referenced it from our local repository. Uh, the Sustainable Mobility API, tracking the progress and resolution. Uh, but basically what happens is if this pull request gets merged, it'll close this issue, um, but not ours, so I'll have to track it there. But, uh, maybe I should rename that. IBLE. That's a little bit more explicit about what's going on. All right, cool. <laughs> this will also be an interesting um, opportunity to see how like well maintained this project is, how active the and developers are, how responsive they are to community uh, contributions. Let's take a couple look at the metrics. This is always an interesting practice anyway. When you're adopting, especially project dependencies that could uh, go out of sync and even block upgrades, it's important to check the pulse a little bit. Uh, we've got one core maintainer. It's been around for a couple of years. The, their involvement is tapering off. There's a couple, the rest of the maintainers are sort of, um, what I call like drive-by or, you know, bump and run or something like that. I don't know what the, Another way of saying that is more politely. It's not bad, because I'm not trying to be um, uh, demeaning or anything like that. But you know, just like people who, like me, <laughs> in fact, uh, who have just like one contribution to make and then maybe aren't gonna take the project. You know, they, we have other things to work on, so I'll be one of those bumping runners if they accept my contribution. I guess it's patch and carry on or something, maybe. All right, in any case, it's not a core project from the serverless framework itself. It's um, maintained by United Income. And just for what it's worth, let's take a look at the uh, serverless project. I mean, while I'm here though, first just references in our issues, we can track it. In our sustainable mobility API issue. That just threads everything together, makes it easier to track the resolution. I don't see this, uh, hopefully this wouldn't affect the build process, but you never know if they're using stale um, dependencies or the build environments using different versions of the dependencies due to how it resolves it locally, uh, you could have unexpected bugs. So really it's, that's why it's important that you pin down your versions and you make it explicit by including these lock files in your um, project. I think that's why this is emerging as a good practice. And we, by way of example, use um, both um, our Python and our JavaScript dependencies. We've got lock files, the equivalent in Python is, uh, mm, there's a couple of competing approaches right now, but um, Pippin and Poetry, I think, have their own uh, approaches. We're using pipin, so it uses pipin lock. I can check, check that real quick. Open recent sustainable mobility API. If you look here at our, so we've got the pip file lock, uh, which is for our Python dependencies, and we're using pipin for that. Um, 
of late, I've been using poetry for Python package project management, dependency management. I think uh, both of them have their um, pluses and minuses, but in general, I've been really impressed by the experience in poetry, and I think it's in some ways aligned more with um, the Python kind of standardized uh, way of defining package metadata using pyproject.toml, which has been approved as like a PEP Python enhancement proposal. So that's just my per, uh, perspective or preference would be using poetry going forward. And really, I like this um, just to use pip itself um, and not have to have these layers on top of pip. But at least both pyp, uh, sorry, uh, pip and uh, poetry build on top of pip. They don't reinvent their own packaging approach and ecosystem like conda, for example. So that's that. So we've got our pip file lock that gives us checksums and version pinning. So all of the dependencies are it's reproducible across development environments. And then we have our package lock, which um, does the same, but for JavaScript dependencies. Welcome to the chat. If you've got any questions or comments about the project, I'll be glad to hear your feedback. If you'd like to try uh, setting up a development environment, I can help you out uh, if you want to get your hands on the code a little bit. We're open source. The um, project is on github.com slash mass global slash sustainable mobility API. Let me know what uh, kind of projects you're interested in working on in the chat. If you're uh, coming from a Python or JavaScript background, if you're working on web development tasks, or if you're interested in mobility, sustainability. So yeah, I think that's, um, actually I should stay over here because there's not really anything I can do to JavaScript dependencies of our project, but I can look at uh, one of these other tasks now. Looks like the build failed. Huh. That's circle CI. Uh, looks like they're using D uh, the spread operator here. Might have been introduced because I put a lock file in here. If they need to pin a specific version of yes, the Babel or something to support this. I'm not sure what's going on here. It's like a dependency of this testing framework. It's not even something that they've written in. They're just using probably ECMAScript features that uh, the spread operator specifically that's not supported perhaps by the node version or the JavaScript version uh, running. using poetry. Out of curiosity, I wonder if... First, just when the spread operator was introduced to the language, I don't know. This might be something I can handle, I could fix in our pull request. If there's like a, a later version of Node that supports it, or if you need um, Babel, Transpiler. Um, you know, this is browser support, but the, I was hoping Node.js has supported it since, since uh, 8. So if we're using Node 10, that should be available, full support. Hmm. What is this? 
behind a harmony runtime flag. Mm. So this might be the case. We had harmony. Um, oops. Docker. Let me open this project one more time. Open recent. I'm not the maintainer of this project, so all this is new. So how, okay, so the circular CI config is here. these build dependencies. Python 2.7. And 3.6, here's the node. So let me see here. It's not really a Docker issue. I just need to somehow. Make sure that Docker is installed with Harmony support. It might be as simple as. NPM. Use Harmony. Hmm. Or else installing. using node that we're not calling over calling npm Right, but we're not using Docker here. Is this? Mm. I bet that this is a Circle CI issue.
because then we wouldn't need this node source installation. Let's just check out this. Um, it might be a matter of just in our package. Adding the flag here to node dash dash harmony. Let's try this. I think it's ES6, right? All right, let's see if this pushing this up there might cause the uh, build, <laughs> might help the build succeed. All right, so it's going to rerun it here. Circle CI. Hmm, hopefully, hopefully that works. I think that's the minimal change. If that works, I'll be glad. Now we don't have to swap out the the image or anything like that, which could un <laughs> unlock a whole bunch of other problems. Who knows?
trusty. Well, it's still under extended security. <laughs> Be better to have a, um, a release that's going to give maintenance updates as well. Hmm. Not sure. Which. Because these repos. start to go stale a little bit and then other projects can't install correctly. Okay. Let's just double check. Circle CI classic image. I think you should be using the Circle CI node. I just don't want to <laughs> shake the tree too much here and stir up some other problems. Well, the build's failing anyway. Okay, so it's a different error. Enable you a six stage. Right, you can't put comments. Comments, you can't put comments in uh, JSON. So I think they need to use a more up-to-date package. And anyway, let's see if I can find this file. What is this? Circle CI. Yes. 
is a little bit of a mess. I'm just gonna update the package circle CI node. And I believe I can do about this. And if Circle CI node is already shipping with Python 3.6, then we don't need this build set. Let's see. Um, I think it was just Circle CI images. So either we do Node or Python. Node, um, what is it? Docker Hub would make it easier to see the dependencies and what's going on in the dang image and just see what it's made of. It's so annoying. Because I need to know if it turned on Ubuntu 18, for example, and then what version of the uh, Python's available there. I think it's some generate sh. Is there a way to view a Docker a Docker file? Yeah, exactly. It's just ready to know. from the base image. CI node.
even they don't want to build Python here. It might be good to just use the Docker Python image and then install Node. But the thing is, it could. It should install its own build dependencies, though, if that's the case. So, yeah, this is <laughs> maybe the better approach. Docker. Um, Circle CI Python. It'll work. So I reinstalled Python 2.7. I don't get that. We're using pip end and then we're using poetry. What is going on? <laughs> and we're using Python 3 and Python 2.7. This is a confusing project. Understand this. So this is serverless Python requirements. They're including those in the image so that the image can then bring in your Python requirements despite your choice of poetry or uh, pipimp. Okay, cool. So then, and probably your choice of um, Python version as well. Hence the Python 2.7. So, okay, not to rock the boat, we'll use a Python 3.6 image.
Yeah, I think this should be good. Then um, this step will be unnecessary. anyway so what did I need to do here so just check out run I think we could I mean Python 2.7 is EOL end of life so I'm gonna rock the boat though some projects could be depending on this and uh, using Python 2.7 so I'll leave that alone Might not need poetry preview. poetry alone for now. I just want to get enough to make these tests pass. rerunning the process it should be a little quicker skipping the Python build it's already has a, actually it's already failing the test it's cool See, I have Python 3.6 image.
This should work. I guess you just needed the patch version. Even if this Docker image is available. Let's see if it breaks. Hmm. Challenging. All right, we'll just refresh it. It should get past that step really quick, or at least fail really fast. Which it is failing. There's our 3.6.5 bump. So basically, a little bit of semantics or syntax. No, semantics has changed. use this in, uh, syntax or this um, indented command block for these multi multi line commands. I don't know if that improves it or not. But let's just see. Okay, we'll get, we got past the image part. That's cool. So npm is failing. npm commands are on. All right, good. We're making progress. Hey, what's up, Pelly here, Miss Hermo? How are you doing? 
Now we're one step closer to running the tests. We just need NPM to be installed. So that is because I removed the node source. Uh, I forgot about that. So that's an easy fix though. I just gotta go back a couple of commits. When I switch the image, it was somewhere right around there. Yeah, here it is. I've just got to make sure Node is installed. Oopsie daisy. So that's happening after poetry. I'll just restore that. Right there. Ooh. Make sure everything's indented correctly. PC crashed? Uh oh, what happened? What were you doing to make it crash? Training neural nets? <laughs> All right, so hopefully this will build now. the problem that I created. Hey, it's running still. It's running the tests, I bet. And we might not need the harmony flag now. Uh, I think you still wouldn't need the harmony flag, though. What are we on? Ooh, it's installing this Python stuff. Python 2. Oh, there we go. Now it's installing Node. installation deprecated okay that's not bad hopefully not a problem <laughs> let me double check up here so if we collapse these other ones oh oh it did fail So yeah, the okay, the uh, Circle CI user doesn't have access to get modules. So this is either just we need to install it minus U. It's capital U or lowercase U. I can't remember. Is it U capital? How about I make it explicit and just dash dash user? Capital Cyber Guy Rich. It'll work. <laughs> Welcome, Rich. Thanks. So, yeah. If I put this U here, everything is going to be fine. I hope so. Otherwise, I'll have to do this stuff.
What did I do? <sighs> okay, yeah. So once we've got Node installed, either I've got to add the user to like the group that has permissions to write to Node modules or create this local Node modules or just hopefully it'll work. Rich, have you any suggestions? Just using capital U here is going to be fine. Or do I need to do this? Uh, NPM configuration. I could add the um, Circle CI user to the, I think it's like the Node group, Node.js group. Let's just try it. <laughs> I just want to have excessive commits here. it up there just a lot of actually I could have just yeah I think on my local machine I've configured it correctly so sorry do um, uh, what are we using npm I'm the one, I'm the idiot that broke this. <laughs> oh boy, jeez. <laughs> um, I wasn't calling anybody an idiot anyway, but uh, yeah, it's Jason. Can't have comments. Blast. I mean, I wish that was just a thing because I want to add uh, a note about why I did that. I still think mm, we might still be having a problem. It's doing its thing. I'm just going to be right back. Welcome, Rich. Thanks for the thanks for the advice as usual, the support as usual. Alrighty then, refresh the page, looking for the red text, <gasps> things are pending, alright. Cool beans, are you in lurk mode, Rich, or what are you up to today? How's the weather in the UK? It's 
snowed here last night. And into the morning. But it's all melted now. It's just so, well, I don't know if it's weird, but uh, we didn't get very much snow all winter. It was a very mild winter. And then now that uh, we're almost in springtime, we're getting, getting all that snow. It just snows, then melts, and snows, then melts. It's very confusing for all the animals and plants. Hmm, pending. Okay, well, it's not, uh, not breaking yet. Is there some other exciting stuff I can do while we're waiting? Python 3.6 worked because I switched the Docker syntax uh, in the configuration file. Huh, it's running the tests, so yeah. That's a good sign. There's quite a few tests that are running. I think the main errors earlier were relating to that harmony flag being disabled, though, and the fact that it's running the tests are is a good sign. Um, yeah, because I think the first test was failing because it couldn't use the spread operator or something like that. syntax errors here. Line 39, etc. Three times. So now we've been able to harmony updated the dependencies in the Docker container. Everything seems to be good. It just has a lot of tests. I don't know how long this comment was um, causing problems as well. When I added the comment to package JSON, could have been back here before I even switched the Python image. I think overall these changes are worthwhile though.
Yeah, it's fine. I gotta rerun all the dependencies, but that way it just we won't flag this as changed because nothing changed there. Just makes the PR a little easier to review, not too not that it was too bad anyway. So now we gotta wait again. So the waiting game, but I think we're good to go. And it's right around lunchtime, a little bit after lunch. So I might just take a break for a while, call this a good stopping point. Um, think about coming back after lunch and trying out, seeing if these <laughs> tests succeed, I think they will. And then seeing if there's something else to do. Later this evening, I'm gonna be working on some data um, sort of migration between Drupal and Wagtail CMS. So at the very least, I should be streaming around 5 o'clock Eastern Europe time. But thank you very much for hanging out. Welcome back. Good to see you again, Rich, if you're still around in the room. I'll try to tweak the, um, the stream quality until, so it's a little bit lower. And thank you, Pellihirma247, for stopping by. Man. You complain about your PC crashing. Thank you for the follow, O2 O N three O two on three. In any case, this has been a Code Buddies live coding hangout. Hope to see you around the Code Buddies community. Thanks for stopping by on Twitch and stay well. <laughs>